Y'all, let's just take a second to appreciate how good this looks. I just unwrapped it. O-M-G. Hi friends, welcome back to Cooking with Aubrey. Today we are gonna make some tamales and we're gonna smother those tam tamales in some ancho cumin cream sauce and it's going to be so delicious and the filling's gonna have chorizo and onion. So I'm super stoked. Let's get started. So we're gonna start with the filling and it's gonna be super easy. It's going to be two ingredients, onion and chorizo. Now, I love me a good pork chorizo, but my best friend broke my fucking but she's coming over with her husband. Wow, that's weird to say. They got married last year, but it's still weird. I'm still adjusting. Um, but anyway, for medical reasons, they do not eat pork. So I'm going to make half of the filling with pork trees out because I still want pork. And then the other half, I'm going to do chicken trezo so they can enjoy it as well. And I'm just going... To dice up this onion real quick and I have a couple pans preheating on the stove right now. Oh my gosh, I picked an onion that's starting to go bad. Wow, I really wasn't paying attention today at the store. Man, when I go to fresh time, I don't have to worry about crap like this. I just like pick the produce blindly <laughs> and like it's all Gucci, you know? But I went to the Mexican store today. They don't have the same standards as fresh time apparently, so. I'm just gonna blame them. I'm not gonna take accountability for my own actions here by not looking at the onion <laughs> before picking it up. So once this onion's diced up, I'm gonna put it in the pans that are preheating. I'm just gonna cook them down for a few minutes and then add the chorizo and cook it up. It's not gonna be anything super cray. It's actually rather, it's gonna be more of a simple recipe. It's just it takes a little bit of time to assemble all the tamales. So it's not a difficult one. It's just a t uh, one that takes some, but it's gonna be delicious. pans preheating here so I know on camera you can only see one pan but I've got two for both the pork and chicken chorizo so um I'm just gonna slowly cook down this onion for actually not slowly I don't know I'm just gonna cook it for like a few minutes so once the onions in the pan you want to turn it down to low heat I only ended up using one and a half of the onions. For the chorizo, I'm using the Supremo brand. Um, it is my favorite brand to work with, um, but you can use whatever chorizo you prefer. The onion has been cooking for about 10 minutes on low heat. And then we're just gonna cook the chorizo all the way through. And then it's done, that's all we're doing for the filling. The chorizo is all done cooking now. So this is the pork one, and this one's the chicken one. You can see the difference in color there. And we're just gonna set this off to the side until we're ready to use it. So to make the dough for the tamales, we're going to need to whip up some lard. So I just use the brand La Prefreda, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, it's also manteca in Spanish. Probably not saying that right. We need one and one third cup of the lard. So we are going to whip up the lard and make it like a little fluffy or, you know, lighten it up a bit. And then we're gonna add in the masa, which is like ground corn. And then we're going to also add in some tomato bouillon with chicken flavor. Because like, have you ever had like those, to like, you know when you eat tamales and like the dough part, is like really bland and it kind of takes away from the flavor because there's just like nothing going on in that with like the masa flavor. So I don't want that for my tamales. I have higher expectations for my tamales. So 
I am going to flavor the damn dough properly. So now we've got the lard in here. So in the mixer, my KitchenAid, so you can use a hand mixer. If you don't have a KitchenAid, that's fine. So I'm just going to whip it up until it gets like fluffier. So I'm going to quickly just scrape down the sides and then let it keep going some more to make sure it's all getting evenly whipped. So this is what you want it to look like. It's, it's lighter now, like I can feel it as I'm scraping it, like it's not like as thick. So that's what we're looking for here, just gets it a little bit fluffier. And now we can add the rest. So for the masa here, I have maseka. Again, I'm probably butchering all these words, but whatever. But this is like instant masa. So you don't need to add like baking powder to this. So when you're getting it, I'll, I'll link this stuff down below, but you just wanna make sure that you're getting the instant one. So you're not adding baking powder. Otherwise you gotta add baking powder. We're going to add in the masa a cup at a time. So I'm going to use, three and a half cups, um, but I'm gonna just start with one cup at a time. Okay, so now I'm going to scrape this down and add in another cup of the masa. Again, you just wanna scrape down the sides. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish adding the rest of this masa off camera. I have two more rounds to go. And to add flavor to it, this is that tomato chicken bouillon flavor right now I was talking about by the brand Noor is what I recommend. And this is gonna give it a whole lot of more flavor. Like if you were to taste this dough right now, it'd be pretty bland. So I'm gonna add in a half of a, or a, <laughs> Three quarters of a quarter cup. We'll see how that goes. So we still have to add the water, but I'm just gonna give this a quick taste to see how it is. I'm gonna add in a little bit more. So just shy of a quarter. Actually, fuck it. We'll just add, yeah. So a quarter cup of the tomato chicken bouillon. Now we're going to add in the warm water and you wanna add it in slowly as it's mixing. So now this masa is all done. Like we're, the dough is ready for the tamales. It's nice, light. Can you hear that? It's just nice and light and soft and fluffy. That's exactly what we want, okay? Now this is a tamale pot. So it has this little tray in here that you can take in and out. Basically, we're gonna put water at the bottom of here and then this tray is what the tamales rest on. So we want the water to be low, to be below, below this because you don't want to boil the tamales, you want to steam the tamales. So you gotta put your water in before you put your tamales in there. I'm going to assemble them and line them up in here as I'm assembling them. And I'm gonna show y'all what we're doing with it. If you don't have a tamale pot, that's totally okay. Before I had a tamale pot, what I would do is I would just take like a, a big pot that you used to like boil pasta in. And then I put my strainer, like my, met, my metal strainer. Basically, let's pretend this is the pot. I put the strainer in there like this and then just do it like that. And it also works. So I mean, I mean I'm sure you can Google ways to Jerry rig a, a freaking steamer at home, but yeah. But after, this was really inexpensive. I think this cost me like 20 bucks. I'm running out of space on my countertop here. This right here are the, I can't lift it up because it's full of water. These are the corn husks. So you want to soak the corn husks in water prior to using them. And it makes them nice and soft and pliable. Otherwise they're gonna break on you when you're trying to like assemble the tamales. He's been soaking in water for like an hour and a half, two hours. It should be longer. It should be like three hours. You can even do it like overnight, but whatever, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. They're just not as pliable. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how we assemble everything. Oh, and we're putting cheese in. I forgot to tell y'all, we're putting cheese in the tamales. We're gonna put 
Mexican two cheese. It's a Chihuahua and Oaxaca cheese. I will, um, I mean, you can use whatever cheese you want. Like I choose this, I chose this cheese because it's really nice, like rich and creamy. So like, that's what I wanted. I didn't want like a sharp cheddar. So, but I mean, honestly, cheese is cheese. We all love cheese, except blue cheese. I don't love blue cheese. Don't put blue cheese in this. Ew, that'd be so gross. Anyway, yeah, use whatever cheese you want. So first you wanna start with your, your husk. Now, if your husk isn't wide enough, you can add another husk. You can make your tamales as small or as big as you want. So we're gonna start with the chunk of the masa and just spread it out. You just want like, like a quarter inch. You don't want to get too close to the edge. However thick that is, I, I don't know. So you just want to, you know, spread it out. So this would be like, kind of like a smaller-ish tamale. You know what I'm saying? And then, it doesn't gotta be perfect. And then you're just going to take your filling of the, the chorizo and the the onion and then you're gonna take some of your cheese put it in there like like that and then you're just gonna fold it over right i always pinch like the tips a little bit kind of see i don't know if that really does anything but i just do that and then you just line them up in your tamale pop city of mine how I love, how I love the city of mine It never gets me down City of mine How I love, how I love the city of mine So now I've done, I'm done assembling all the tamales So I just put this foil here in the middle to divide So I know which side is the chicken and which side is the pork and we're gonna steam these for 45 minutes or until they're done. You know it's done when the masa here pulls away. So right now it's stuck because we just did it, but when it pulls away, you know it's done. If you are enjoying this video, please like, comment, subscribe, follow this channel. It would mean a lot to me because it means I'm not talking to the wall. And y'all are out there actually enjoying these videos. So, um, but if you're not enjoying the videos, please don't comment. Thanks, bye. For the sauce, we're going to revive like these chilies. So these are ancho chilies and these are guajillo chilies. So we're just gonna like bring them back to life, like resuscitate them, super easy. All we're gonna do is cook them, like simmer them in some in water until like they're nice and soft again. So I'm just gonna use like two thirds of like each of these packages. So one, two, three, four ancho chilies and then what we're gonna do after after like they're all like brought back to life and stuff we're going to puree them in the blender and we're gonna use a little bit of the water that they're going to you know revive and so we're gonna blend it up with that same water they're gonna cook in because it's gonna have all that flavor is going to be extracted from these so we're gonna blend it all up and that's where it's gonna be like the base of our sauce one to actually you know what it'll be better if we seed these now before they cook because it's easier so i'm just gonna count these out first so one two three four five seven ten of the guajillo chilies so we want to get rid of like the stems and the seeds so it's easier to do when they're dried because once this all gets like resuscitated, it'll get like more mushy and it's like not as easy to get them out. If there's a little bit of seeds left behind that, that's okay, it's not a big deal. Um, but we just wanna get the majority of them out. So you can literally just like kind of take it apart and just do this. And there's always some like at the very tip of the chili too. So that's just what we're gonna do. And it's gonna be the same for these. Like this one doesn't have a stem, but if it did, obviously you take it off. Oh, this one's got a lot of seeds up in there. So it's, it's pretty easy to do. 
Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna do this on all the chilies and then cover them water in water and bring them to a simmer. So now the chilies are all done being separated from the seeds. So I'm just gonna cover this in water. As you can see, there are still a few seeds. That's not a big deal. I'm just gonna cover this in water, bring it to a simmer and cook them for probably about 10 minutes. All right, so the peppers are done like resuscitating. I don't wanna flip it too much because I'm gonna see. Anyway, water is gonna come out, not good. So the I brought this to a simmer and then I cooked it for 15 minutes after it was brought to a simmer and now they're nice and soft. So I'm just going to put the peppers in here and then with the liquid, it's not hot right now because it's been cooling because I've been making the tamales in the meantime. So this isn't hot, So, but if you're doing this while it's hot, you need to make sure that you are um, slowly pureeing this and while allowing some ventilation, like an, a gap in the top, like as like this has like a hole in the middle, like that's perfect. Like, cause you need to let the steam escape because when you blend something that's hot, pressure builds up and if there's no ventilation for that steam to escape what will happen is it will explode in your face and it will burn you so you don't want to do that okay don't burn yourself now i'm going to try to measure like how much liquid is like in here you know, you know, i'll just do like so about two cups of the liquid okay you can see how much it is now i'm just gonna blend this all right up so now it's all blended up Look at that color, it's so rich. So I'm just gonna put this right back in the pan that they were cooking in originally. Um, I have that pan preheating, so I'm just gonna put this in and then we're gonna add um, cream and we're gonna reduce it down a little bit. So we've got our pureed peppers here and we're gonna add in a pint of heavy cream and we're gonna let this reduce. You see how liquidy it is? So we're gonna let this reduce down until it gets like nice and thick. So we're gonna reduce this by probably about 25 to 50%, just until it's nice and thick. So I'm gonna bring this to a simmer. This is a lot of sauce. <laughs> okay, so I think in the description, I'm gonna put for half the recipe, half of this recipe. <laughs> We're also gonna add in some cumin. So two and a half tablespoons of cumin. We're gonna add in some salt. Start with a half tablespoon, full tablespoon. All right, so now we're just gonna let this simmer down. And then at the very end, we're gonna add lemon juice. Y'all already know what it is. I'm squeezing some fresh, ass lemon juice. You know why? Because we don't use the squeeze bottle lemon juice that looks like a lemon but doesn't taste like a lemon. Okay, so we're squeezing some fresh lemon juice. I'm gonna say it till I'm blue in the face for the sauce. The sauce is simmering. It's been simmering for about 15 minutes. So you just wanna make sure that it's on the lowest setting once it does come to a simmer because this will boil over. So you just wanna be careful. The sauce has been simmering for about 25 minutes. I've just been stirring it occasionally. You can see it's thickened up now. I mean, this could even go thicker if you wanted it to. Like, but for me, like, this is Gucci. But if you want it thicker, just let it reduce down like longer. And we're gonna do some lemon juice, that fresh lemon juice. Um, I'm gonna start with one and a half tablespoons. and go from there. So this is good, it's all done, and this looks, like this is gonna be so delicious, guys. So delicious. So it's been 45 minutes. The masa is like almost coming off easy, but still sticking like a little bit, so I'm gonna leave it in for like another 10 minutes. All right, so it's been another 10 minutes. Oh, that's cheese right there. The masa's coming off easy, so it's done now. Y'all, let's just take a second to appreciate how good this looks. I just unwrapped it. OMG. Hey y'all, future Aubrey is here. So I'm actually editing this video right now and I realized I forgot to tell y'all 
that I'm going on vacation. So like, I don't know when like the next uplo upload's gonna be. I am filming an episode while I'm on vacation. Brooke and I are going super excited. Um, we're going to a few places and um, I'll probably also do like a little mini compilation video of like little fun bits of maybe a couple minutes long. I don't know. Do you guys want to see something like that? If not, I don't have to do that less editing for me um, but um i just want to set the expectation that i'm not sure when the next upload is going to be because of vacation but i promise that i am filming while on vacation i need a break okay we all just need a break this is my time for a break i haven't been on vacation in over a year and Aubrey just needs to mentally check the fuck out. You know what I mean? Cause I'm going fucking crazy. See my shirt? Nope, not today. It's been like, nope, not this fucking month. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna try it. But now Brooke is here. Hey. My best friend, she's camera shy. She had to go check her face for you guys. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, <laughs> wait, we gotta, let's get you a tamale too. Let's both react. Okay. <laughs> so the chicken one's for her. So this is perfect. All right, I'm gonna set up her plate. All right, so she's got the chicken one, I've got the pork one, and we're gonna see how it is. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is so good. Mm. It's so good. This is delicious. Oh my God, I'm trolling. <laughs> this is why I'm single. <laughs> Brooke, what do you this think? so good. You made how many? I made 22. I need I need all of them. <laughs> Guys, she's taking my tamales. These are so good though, seriously. Can I try a bite of your chicken one? Mm -hmm. Do you want to try a bite of my pork one? I shouldn't. Okay. I'm gonna try your chicken one. <laughs> mm. Oh my They're god. So good. They're both so good. <laughs> Guys, okay, you can't go wrong with this. These tamales, like, you need them in your life. All right? Yeah. Like, and if you soft. were ever lost in life, you weren't sure <laughs> which path you should take. Let me tell you. You need to take this path. Because it's going to be the best goddamn path you've ever chosen. <laughs> all right. We're about to smash mm. all these tamales by y'all. 